Hello and welcome to VPC. My name is Sarah and in this video I'll be discussing how to check all your PC parts and ensure they are all compatible with one another. Many parts make up a computer system and they all must be compatible with each other to work. Otherwise your system may not run smoothly or even run at all. Starting off with socket slots on the motherboard that hold the processor in place. Your first decision will be deciding what processor and motherboard to go with. Look up the socket size for both the processor and the motherboard you intend to use. Keep in mind, if you try to pair a processor with the incorrect socket type, you can ruin the processor and the motherboard. So processors, there are two main brands of processors to choose between for gaming PCs, AMD Ryzen line and the Intel Core line. The Ryzen the Ryzen line has been made forward and backwards compatible for the foreseeable future. So when replacing your CPU in the future, you won't need to change your motherboard. However, each new generation of Intel Core processors needs a motherboard to go with it. So if you want to update your CPU often without having to replace your motherboard each time, then AMD has the advantage here. Next, chipsets. They determine a motherboard's capability. Processors support multiple levels of chipsets, usually ranging from basic features on a motherboard such as AMD Ryzen A320 chipset, which will not allow overclocking to more advanced chipsets, such as AMD Ryzen X570, which unlocks full overclocking and more. Now, form factor should be also considered when choosing a motherboard as their sizes vary. Smaller boards often have less RAM and GPU slots as well as fewer SATA connections. The most commonly used form factors for standard desktop PCs are Mini ITX, Micro ATX, ATX and E-ATX. The ATX motherboard is the most commonly used size for standard PCs. Moving on to RAM, which can be confusing when it comes to speeds and what it is compatible with. Capacity-wise, casual users won't max out their RAM, but it is still important to to know what your motherboard's max memory is. Typically, a modern motherboard will support up to 64 gigabytes of RAM, but some support more or less than this. For speed, the current generation of RAM DDR4, the stock speed maxes out at 2133 MHz. When RAM is rated over 2133 MHz, it's not a stock speed. This just shows it's rated to be overclocked to that specific speed. When buying RAM with speeds higher than 2133 MHz, ensure your motherboard supports it. So far as processor compatibility is concerned, RAM is compatible with both AMD and Intel processors. Only difference would be for the overclock speeds. RAM also commonly comes in double or quadruple channel kits, allowing more bandwidth. With double and quadruple channels, RAM is mostly standard. Double check which your motherboard supports. Graphic cards, motherboard compatibility is not usually an issue here. They don't require a video card specific socket or chipset. PCIe is backwards compatible, so even PCIe 3.0 graphic cards will work on older motherboards that only have PCIe 2.0. Although PCIe 3.0 and the latest PCIe 4.0 has more bandwidth allowance. Now, running multiple graphics cards in a single computer isn't entirely uncommon. It is still one of the most common compatibility issues though. To run multiple graphics cards, you will need to find models marketed either AMD Crossfire or NVIDIA SLI NVLink. Next, making sure hard drives are compatible. Most drives still have SATA data and power connections. However, if you are planning to use newer M2 titles, Type SSD drive, you'll have to check your motherboard specs as some may not yet be supported. The commonly used M2 form factor uses PCIe mini connector on the motherboard and is often associated with a number such as an N.2 2280. This lets you know the length and width of the drive as some motherboards will only allow for a shorter N.2 like an M.2 2240. Mixing and matching is okay as a 
an NVMe SSD and a mechanical drive are all compatible with each other. You can have multiple drives and storage types in your computer. So, does the case really matter? Compatibility wise, absolutely. There are three main things that you want to think about when checking for compatibility. Form factor, graphic cards, clearance and airflow. Motherboards come in multiple sizes and you will need to find a case that matches. Some smaller cases may have limited room for graphics cards. Each case should list the max graphics card's height and length limit, and each graphics card's manufacturer should provide its dimensions for you. Now, stock coolers. Make sure it matches your motherboard sockets. Processor's heatsink sit right on top, which means it's using the same socket as the processor itself. So your cooler needs to be compatible with the processor socket as well. Well, when choosing a liquid cooling option, you'll need to make sure your case has enough space. A liquid cooler utilizes a radiator that usually has between one to three fans and will need a case with a compatible fan layout. Moving on to whether your PSU has enough power. Your components have specific power requirements, so making sure that your power supply matches these is critical. Have a look on our website for a handy PSU calculator link in the description which will calculate if your PSU can power all of your components. Your motherboard will be using 24 pin power connector and your processor power ranges from 2 pin power to 8 pin power requirements. A graphics card could use anywhere between 4 pin to a 12 pin connector depending on how much power it needs. Hard drives and SSDs that use a SATA connection will also each need power to be supplied to them. If you plan on using multiple drives, make sure your power supply comes with enough connectors. If you plan on adding anything extra such as LEDs and fans that don't run off the motherboard's power, make sure your power supply has the correct connections. Finding the right display is important. The three most commonly used connector types right now for displays are DVI, HDMI and DisplayPort. Most graphic cards now will have at least one or two of these connectors, usually at least a HDMI. If you're looking to make sure your graphics card is rated for high resolution, most graphics cards are still not capable of truly running 4K graphics. Depending on your graphics card, you may be able to get a monitor with some advanced features such as high refresh rate or FreeSync and G-Sync enabled. AMD FreeSync and Nvidia G-Sync are great features to have on a monitor if your graphics card supports it. On select graphics cards, this allows game frame rate to sync with your monitor's refresh rate to help avoid screen tears. For more monitor information, we have made a number of videos on the different types of best monitors in 2021. Links will be in the description for them and the adjoining WePC articles. Thank you for watching. It may be a lot of information to process at first, but please have a look at the article in our description for more detail and a handy checklist so you don't miss a thing. So guys, please leave us a comment down below, hit the like and subscribe button and the notification bell. And if you look over here, there'll be a video that we know you'll really enjoy. Thanks again.